So hello there and welcome back to this F129 Alpha Romeo career mode. We're at round 3 at the Shanghai International Circuit in China. We've got some messages to read first of all. The goals update then, so we've got a new one. Uh, finish 11th or better in the next two races. So essentially, well yeah, finish 11th. Uh, so essentially you can try and get the points if you can. For an extra 600 resource points, which would be very, very helpful. Uh, from Carl, morning everyone, I've attached a preview for this weekend's Grand Prix. If you have any questions, come see me in the data centre. So you can see there on the right hand side, the tyres available, where we are in the drivers and constructors standings. The developments have come in, the gearbox is always going to happen. The uh, engine power is always 50-50, um, but it has been bolted onto the car. So we'll be doing some additional running in FP1 and FP2 to gain the extra resource points for running that. And the weather forecast as well, cloudy to a bit of sun towards the end of qualifying. And the same in the race as well, it's going to start a bit overcast and then pick up gradually as the race goes on so again no sign of rain in the qualifying in a race we might have it in one of the practice sessions so then obviously there is a normal contract that we don't really need to have a look at hopefully we can get our value over our contract value going into a new contract renegotiation uh, no R&D in progress because obviously it passed and we can have a look here as well. So finally some cars or some teams are doing some upgrades. Looks like uh, both Mercedes and Ferrari have had small upgrades as have Red Bull, uh, Racing Point and uh, we continue to make upgrades as well. We're now pulling away from Toro Rosso and closing up on McLaren. Williams as well have had a nice little upgrade so they've managed to bridge that large gap between Toro Rosso and themselves. As for the vehicle management obviously we'll be using the practice gearbox off camera for FP1 and FP2 and then I'll be back with you guys in a little while for FP3 and qualifying. That's at 18% the event gearbox is a bit of a worry a 25 after two of the six events but we are now plugging away at the gearbox durability so that will be uh, reduced in the next coming episodes ICE event 110 laps completed 25% wear so far that's fine really we still got good power out of that 21 for the MGU-H 22 for the turbocharger everything else is still in the teens so there's not much else to look at then I'm going to go away off camera of course and do FP1 and FP2 uh, away and I'll be back with you guys in a little while for the beginning of FP3 So here we are then, FP1 and FP2 are done, happy to report, very happy to report actually, we are really on the pace here, and I think if we manage to keep it clean in qualifying and up by rain, we've got a very, very good chance of starting well inside the top 10. Um, FP1, I did a lot of my running on the hard tyres, got a couple of practice programmes done, FP2 was focused mainly on the medium tyres to try and gauge some sort of a range in the tyre wear, seems okay, a little bit better than it was in Bahrain. Uh, we ended the session in 7th place, uh, we were the second quickest of the medium runners, um, uh, I think the quickest one ahead of us was Patel, who was only about six, seven tenths quicker than us, and uh, we were nearly, I think, eight or nine tenths quicker than the likes of Magnussen, Perez, uh, Norris as well. Um, so uh, yeah, we're you know eight or nine tenths quicker than you know the, the solid midfield run is where I want to be. So we look good um, for uh, a, a very, very strong qualifying and possibly a race as well, depending on obviously the strategy and the weather. But we go to FP3 now. I've got the uh, practice qualifying program to do to gain a few more resource points as well that'll pretty much be the only running we do in fp3 so as soon as i get that done uh we'll uh, we'll uh, basically skip the rest of the session let the timer run out and then move straight on to qualifying so we go to fp3 and try to get the final practice program done so here we are in the garage we'll have a quick look at the weather it's going to rain in a few minutes we want to get out nice and early if we can so exactly what we will do uh, so, uh, oh no, I need to go back to here, don't I? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, practice program. We've got a time management and a qualifying pace. We only need to do one of them, but if we set a good time in sector two and sector three, we get more resource points as well. So, uh, we'll jump out on circuit then, on the soft tyres. Uh, weather change warning. Hopefully, it will stay dry for at least the first lap. So just coming out of the garage now, it hasn't started raining yet, but it is imminent and we kind of want to set our qualifying uh, spec time, if you like, on the uh, soft tyres and it has just, I believe, started to rain now, so um, I haven't done any running in career mode yet in the wet, so it's going to be very crucial that we uh, manage to get round and set this lap time. Because if uh, if it if we can't do it in a dry, I'm not going to do it in the wet, and we'll just uh, pretty much simulate the rest of the session. Save the gearbox, of course, and other engine components. Just 
So I've got Devon Butler ahead of me. So I want to fall back a little bit because I don't really want to be catching him. That should be enough. Okay then, here we go then. Hopefully it stays dry enough. You can see the rain's coming down quite heavily already. We've still got DRS. Here we go then. This is the qualifying pace program. I don't think it's going to happen. We have to get past Devon Butler, but we're almost eight tenths down on the Delta time that we need to do to even get green. Uh, it's now over a second, so yeah, it, it's pretty much done now at this point. Uh, it's going to be in the wet from now on. Yeah, look, I'm really struggling for traction now. I'm almost two seconds off now, so it's not going to happen. So we'll dive straight back into the pits then, and uh, we'll call it quits on FP3. Disappointing, would have been nice to get some... Uh, to get some more uh, resource points. Unfortunately, it's just a bit too wet. We will complete the lap, though, anyway, because we may very well be the fastest in FP3, which is nice. You can see they're almost three seconds off the delta time. It was never going to happen. So we go P1, and we'll probably stay P1 as well, but we'll head back into the pits now, simulate the rest of the session, and move on to qualifying. out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. You really went all out in practice today. Are you testing new components? It's the start of the season. How do you think things are going to go for you? Great. Well, that's everything. So then, we're back at the workstation. Uh, me and Devon Butler were the only two drivers that managed to complete a lap on the dry tyres. Devon Butler was several seconds slow than us. So we did end FP3 as the fastest driver, but only two drivers set, you know, some sort of decent lap time. So we got a few messages here then. Uh, good luck out there today from Emma. The weather forecast, cloudy and overcast in both qualifying and a race. But the sun does come out towards the end. And there's obviously some information there about the circuit. We'll have a quick look as well. Um, at the, uh, uh, where is it, vehicle management, yes, yeah, so onto the gearbox now, obviously this is the most important one, we're not worried about the practice gearbox, as I said, we can order a new one whenever we feel like it, the event gearbox, so we've done two of the six races, we're up to 26%, so uh, that might very well be in the 40s by the time we complete the Chinese race, if we do finish, of course, as for the power unit, 31% on the ICE, still nice and healthy, to be honest, that is the highest uh, turbocharger is 28, 27 for the MGUH as well. So, uh, yeah, okay. We'd, uh, we might have to swap over to the new units by about round five or six. Uh, as for our contract, it is the same as you can see. Our value is slightly higher than our normal contract at the moment. And we have chosen a new rival. Forgot to mention it at the beginning of the episode, but we've now chosen George Russell as our second rival. So uh, we've got to beat Raikkonen and Russell consistently to gain a bit more respect as well. Other than that, there's nothing else to look at. So we'll go to qualifying. Uh, I think it's going to be very similar to Bahrain where we're going to be well on the pace if we run the soft tyres. So I might do the first lap on the mediums and see how we are. And if we are quite down the order, I might have to bolt onto the soft tyres. But again, um, I want to qualify sort of as far up the grid as I can, but on the medium tyres. The soft tyres round here don't last that long and we'll definitely be having to do the two-stop strategy. And as we saw in Bahrain, starting at the back and finishing well inside the points, the one-stop strategy is certainly king, certainly at a track like China. But we'll go to qualifying and see what we can do. Welcome to Shanghai, China, for what I've no doubt is going to be a fantastic F1 qualifying session. I want to talk briefly about the strategy in these qualifying sessions. Anthony Davidson, how can a driver adjust their approach to gain those critical extra tenths of a second? Well, qualifying isn't about adjusting your approach necessarily. It's more about trying to repeat a low fuel run that you've practiced prior to this session. You're looking for perfection on the lap. 
and that's hard to achieve if you're trying something new. There are some variables that can stand in your way, however. Track position or unexpected yellow flags, for example. Coupled with ever-changing track conditions, it's important to be out there at the right moment. But as a driver, you have to try and ignore these distractions and just keep your mind focused on that one perfect lap. So here we are then, in the garage. I think I'll go out nice and early onto the uh, medium tyres. You can see there's a 1.5 second difference between them. 2.3 seconds between the mediums and uh, uh, sorry, the hards and the softs. So uh, looking at this then, looking at the data, it looks like then that uh, essentially we are skipping a compound between the softs and the medium tyres because there's only, what, six tenths of a difference between them, six, seven tenths. But there's a best part of 1.6 seconds between them. So uh, it says we're running C4, C3 and C2 tyre compounds but my guess is we are skipping a compound between these two but we will butt on the medium tyres anyway we'll drain the fuel out and we'll go out there for our first lap it's going to be very crucial then uh, to make sure that we uh, we nail this lap we made a mistake in Bahrain on these tyres and then crashed out obviously on the soft tyres as well which started last I don't want to have a repeat of that here as well we want to give it the full beans on these medium tyres and see what lap time we can do against everyone else it might be enough to get into the top 10 I doubt it but it'll be a good benchmark to see what we can do. So just come down the pit lane at the moment then. Limit it off. Out on circuit we go. It's overcast, so track and tyre temperatures will be down a little bit because of it. But I'm sure we can still uh, put in a decent lap time. So just allowed Russell to go past. Plenty of track space behind me. So we've got to make sure that we do fall back as much as we can from Russell. Just change the uh, fuel mix in the EOS mode as well. Slam on the brakes into the hairpin as well. Get them uh, brake temperatures up. Here we go then. This is our first qualifying run on the medium tyres. And over the line then, one point, nearly 1.8 off the pace. So I think we will have to, uh, well it's a possibility, 1.8 off of a tail. That is a possibility of sneaking inside the top 10. We're ahead of Russell, who's on the soft tyres as well. Did run out of VRS though, coming into the final corner. So we probably lost a tenth for two there. But we'll have a slow cruise back to the pit then. And uh, we'll move forward with the session, four or five minutes, and just see uh, where we stack up against everyone else. So five minutes left of the session. We're down in 16th place at the moment. We're also last in the uh, speed trap. I'm not too bothered by that. Uh, so if we look at the car setup then, uh, these two, well, between the softs and the mediums anyway, there's about 1.6 seconds worth of difference. We're 2.2 off the pace. So in theory, if we nailed a perfect lap, we'll be within six tenths of pole, which is going to put us up here fighting the top six. That's how quick we are. Um, 
Now, I could go for it and absolutely get myself well inside the top 10, but um, I don't want to be in 16th and I don't want to be inside the top 10 really on a set of soft tyres unless we are well up the grid. So uh, we are going to go out again on the soft tyres and we're going to save a set for the race as well. So it could be a case of uh, going like soft, soft, hard, something like that, something a bit different. Um, but we are going to go out and circuit at the moment then. I think there's only a few cars out there at the moment. And now the track is starting to fill up, but that's fine. Track temperature uh, and air temperature is going to go up a little bit as well in the next couple of minutes. So that will help lap times. Yeah, so 36.213, Jeff is telling me. You can see there, I mean, just looking at that, we, we are the best in the midfield. There's no doubt about it. Even on those medium tyres, we're very much clear of the guys behind us. And we're only a few temps off. I mean, to get into top 10, we're only six temps away. I could easily manage that on a decent-ish soft tyre run. So uh, we'll exit this now. We'll go out on circuit. By. I'm not going to run to a pace. I'm going to make that very clear. I'm not going to go out there and try to get the 11th fastest time. I am just going to go absolutely go for it. Um, we haven't got, you know, it's, it's either a case of probably starting 17th, 18th once everyone uh, improves their lap times towards the end. I don't want to be down now. I want to be as far up the grid as possible. Everyone wants to be as far up the grid as possible. So we are just going to absolutely just go for it. As we just put over to the side to allow a Ferrari through. With Vettel, who's currently on provisional pole. Good luck to him. It's going to be interesting if we do qualify inside the top 10, starting on these tyres, exactly what strategy will be available to us. We'll have to two stop. And we could go soft, soft, hard, or soft, medium, medium. I'm not too sure. It depends what tyres are available to us, of course. We will have at least uh, another fresh set of soft tyres. We'll only have one set of mediums, one set of hards, actually, thinking about it going into the race. Uh, so soft, soft, hard, or soft, soft, medium will be the strategy to go for. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Just bring up the tyre graph there. Brakes, of course, down, but it doesn't matter too much. It's all about getting these tyres up to speed. We'll also increase the ERS and the fuel as well. Slam on the brakes. And that should be everything nicely up to temp, temp once we come at the final corner. So here we go then. What can we do on these soft tyres here at China? I lost all the time in the hairpin, all the time. We was about, I think, seven temps up going into the hairpin, and I just outbreak myself, and we ended up losing, I think, about half a second. Bearing in mind, if we lost that half a second, we'd have only been good enough for ninth place by the looks of it. Um, so uh, my prediction of the fact that we could have been fighting for a top six was a bit off the mark there. We was almost a second off of that as it was anyway. Um, so we line up in 14th place. There's a Ferrari lockout with Vettel and Leclerc uh, first and second. And Bottas, Verstappen, Hamilton and Gasly completing the top six for the big three teams. Then Perez in the Force India. Double Renault inside the top ten in Hulkenberg, Ricardo, Magnussen in tenth in a... Uh, just ahead of his teammate Grosjean uh, and Sainz Norris together with the McLaren so both the Renaults, Haas and McLarens all together 
Then we are in 14th place. Stroll in 15th. Raikkonen in 16th. Weber, Butler, Albon and Russell complete the grid. Both of those four quite a way off the pace. Um, slightly dis... I mean, I'm okay starting 14th. Don't get me wrong. We can go for the one-stop strategy now, which is uh, happy days for us. Um, but it would have been nice to be a bit closer. I mean, if we managed to keep that five tenths, we would have been just inside the top ten, which is uh, probably the worst strategy for us, really. You know, if you want to be inside the top ten, you want to be as far up the grid as possible, not in ninth or tenth. It really does hinder your progress. But we can start in 14th place and go for the one-stop strategy. So uh, there's lots to play for in the race we could have a similar race like we did in Bahrain as well picking picking up a handful of points as well but of course we've got to keep it clean and consistent throughout the 50% race so in a while we break down we completed qualifying and we out qualified both Russell and Raikkonen so uh, we're just two points behind Raikkonen now and already ahead of George Russell which is helpful the resource points then for qualifying this should be uh, a nice <clears throat> comfortable amount it's the result v car performance which is the main one only 70 there for finishing in 14th place but it still gives us a nice healthy overall total that we can uh, spend nicely after this race is done the reputation there going up quite nicely the Williams team is now uh, giving us quite a lot of faithful uh, options as well as is the Toro Rosso team uh, Red Bull Mercedes still quite a lot down the bottom but uh, we're almost what was that three quarters of the way maybe maybe two thirds with Alfa Romeo so that's always nice as well and the respect level there as well creeping up slowly but surely we should be in with a good chance in the race. Yep, we should indeed then. So we got a couple of messages to look at. Uh, just one, actually, pre-race. It's that time again, I guess. Are you nervous? Well, I'm sure you're keeping a calm head. Just try and visualise the first lap like we discussed. So, uh, yeah, have a look at anything else. I don't think there's anything we can really do. I don't want to change units or anything like that. We'll just run with what we've got. The gearbox now at 28%, which is a bit of an issue because we've only completed two races. We're about to go into the third one as well. So, of course, I'll end the episode there after FP3 and qualifying, starting from 14th place and this is our penalties. So thank you very much for watching this episode. And I'll see you for the race very soon.